Hello and welcome to HPA Global Insights, where we'll be interviewing experts from the dietary supplement, nutritional ingredient, and overall natural health food industry. Please like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell, and comment below. Now on with the show. All right, welcome. We're here with another video. Today we're talking uh, with our good friend Eric Lee from Tmall, which is uh, you know part of the overall Alibaba group, and we're going to be talking about cross-border and e-commerce and all kinds of fun things there. Uh, just welcome, Eric. How you doing, Eric? Good. How about you, Jeff? Doing well. Doing well. All right. So let's just jump into this. And obviously, the biggest thing which happened in November, and this is an annual event, is the big Singles Day. Um, sales extravaganza, ex extravaganza that that Tmall does. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about that. Maybe like the overall sales volume, and then where do where do supplements kind of fit in terms of ranking on Tmall in terms of the the the, the overall sales? Sure. So a little bit different of what happened with Double Eleven this year is that um, instead of measuring just the singles day, uh, we, kick, we had a kickoff uh, event starting in uh, November 1st, all the way until November, November 11th. We kind of see it as a two week shopping uh, extravaganza. And um, with doing that time frame, we did uh, $74.1 billion uh, USD in uh, GMV. So it's still our biggest event to date. Um, supplement is a huge, huge, um, category uh, within that realm. Uh, in terms of Tmall Global, um, supplement is the second largest category uh, behind cosmetics. Okay, and we, and we were talking earlier, um, so the appetite for supplements continues to grow, the category uh, continues to grow. And one of the main reasons for that is something that we deal with at the association lot is the, is the, is the registration of health products. And it's very difficult to go through that process in China and cross-border offers companies a, a viable solution to enter the market. And so are, are cosmetics and supplements both in the same situation in terms of market entry to the traditional trade is, is difficult? And that's why those are so popular through cross-border because they can kind of avoid the registration stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. When it comes to supplement, you know, um, if you're trying to enter into China through the traditional trading route, you need to get the blue hat label, which can range anywhere from you know, a year all the way up to uh, three to five years, depending on how the um, entity reacts to the application. Mm -hmm. But with cross border, um, as long as you have a, tra a USA trademark, uh, you can pretty much get started right away um, and, so, uh, and access to the Chinese consumer. So it's very, very attractive. Um, with cosmetics, obviously, uh, if you're a USA brand, you wanna sell into China, through the traditional route, you need to do animal testing. And uh, obviously a lot of brands over here in the States doesn't wanna do that. So cross-border, again, provides a very viable alternative for them to access the Chinese uh, consumers without doing so. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so for, for companies in, in America, so let's uh, go back just a little bit. So you're based in, in Los Angeles and prior to the pandemic, you know, you're going back and forth between headquarters, which is Alibaba, Tmall headquarters is in Hangzhou, China, correct? Oh, correct. Yeah, so you're going back and forth, but your main job and role um, as, the, as the lead for supplements and business development, you're based in the US and are, are you focused on, on North American products or just US products? Um, North American products uh, in general. Okay. Uh, the goal here, uh, obviously being based in Los Angeles, um, is to find uh, as many USA brands that wants to enter into the China market through our platform. Okay, so, so for any you know, people listening out there that have a brand and they haven't approached China yet or they're thinking about it, um, there's a variety of ways for them to approach Tmall um, depending on what, what they want to get out of it and what they want to put into it. So let's go over a few of those ways, um, starting out with maybe um the the path of least resistance or for for a company that's brand new that's smaller like the easiest way to get started how, how would a company do that um so the easiest way uh, and the entry point will be a program what we call a to tof 
uh, acronym, which stands for Timo Overseas Fulfillment. Uh, what we created with that program, is, uh, we have warehouses located in uh, California or New Jersey. And um, pretty much a brand, all they have to do is to sign up for that program and ship their products into any one of those two uh, warehouses. If you're on the West Coast to California, East Coast to New Jersey, and we will take care of the end-to-end -end shipping from um, any of uh, warehouse based in the U.S. all the way uh, onto the uh, Chinese, Chinese consumers' uh, hand in China. And we'll also be taking care of the custom clearance as well as the operation and marketing of the product. So pretty much uh, the TOF uh, program is designed for brands to kind of test the water in China, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, to get a better sense of the uh, reaction um, that the Chinese consumer have on their products and to see uh, what it's like to work with Tmall uh, in the beginning. Um, once you kind of get your uh, feet wet, you kind of understand the operational procedure. Um, the bread and butter of Tmall Global is still uh, the second method, which is uh, something called TMG, which is, stands for uh, Tmall Global Flagship Store. And that's where you will actually hire a dedicated team to open a flagship store on a platform and sell your products that way. And then finally, the third method, um, it's, it's if your product's selling great, everything is going well, we have something called TDI, which stands for Tmall Direct Import. And that's where the uh, team based in Hangzhou, China, will actually buy the product directly from the brand and have it ship over to the bottom warehouse in China and distribute it there. Okay, so, so going back to the first one, the TOF, so that's kind of, um, the company doesn't need to really put much or if anything into marketing they don't have to have a special team or anything that's all handled by you guys right correct um the first three months um of warehousing for that products is free um and it it goes every um if you let's say if you ship a, a thousand uh, uh, pieces of the products into the warehouse you sell out of that you have three months to sell it for where we will house the warehouse completely free you sell out of that you strip another thousand piece that three month uh counter gets reset that's the great part. And then with the marketing, um, the first three months uh, is completely free. It's only where if we figure out that the product isn't selling, we need additional marketing support. We have various packages that um, we can offer to the brand. And it's completely um, optional. You don't have to participate in it or spend any um, marketing dollars if you don't want to. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, that sounds like a really good deal uh, to test no. the waters in China for sure. No, um, definitely. And now with these different models, are there, there's different, from what I understand, there's different tax brackets. Uh, if you're shipping the product from overseas directly to the consumer compared to shipping from, uh, you know, like the, the one you mentioned before, the Tmall Global Flagship Store, that's, mm -hmm. those products are going to be mostly warehoused in a free trade zone in China. And the tax coming out of there is going to be different than the tax coming from overseas directly, right? Uh, no, it's actually both categorized as the cross-border channel. Mm -hmm. So the actually uh, 11.9, actually for supplement, it originally dropped to nine point, around 9.7%. It's going to be taxed the same. Oh, so if it comes, okay, so they're both. But in the past, I remember there was a difference back a while ago. Yeah. There, was, there was a difference between yeah. those two. Okay. No, no it, it's, it's uh, all the same right now. Okay, sounds good. So the major difference there would be uh, the fact that from the free trade zone, the product would get to the consumer faster. Uh, definitely. Uh, if you are, uh, if your product is in the bonded warehouse, the consumer can receive it within one to two days. Um, um, but obviously shipping from the United States um, and, and we're facing with the pandemic time, the lead time ranges anywhere from seven up to 25 days right now. Yeah, from, from direct shipment from, from the U.S., okay. I mean, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we have a, the, the lead time isn't that bad. It's under 14 days. Yeah. But uh, with the pandemic, obviously, we have a lot of <clears throat> issues in terms of, you know, finding the airplanes that will actually... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, they, only, there's only so many flights. Exactly. That's yeah. the biggest issue with that right now. Yeah. So no, when I, and I can attest to that, um, you know, when I was, I was living in, in uh, China for many years and right before I left, uh, my wife and I, we did order quite a few things and it would take about, I think the fastest it got to us was about eight days one time, but it's typically around 10 days from the direct shipment. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad. If, if you know, you have to wait. Um, so there's, a, there's obviously a lot more 
that I'm sure, you know, questions within this realm of how to, how to work with Alibaba. And we can always address those off, off air with anyone that's interested. They can contact me directly or, or you. Um, so let's go to the next thing and just talk a little bit like why, why would someone want to work with Tmall given the fact that, you know, cross border is growing so much in China and there's so many different um, players coming up, these new startups, some that have been around is, you know, a long time and a lot of competition. So where, why would someone want to choose Tmall? Um, we're still the market leader uh, by such a huge margin. Um, not only do we have Tmall Global, but um, we also purchased uh, one of our biggest competitor, which is known as Kala, which only did uh, um, a cross-border business. Um, so with these two um, platforms alone, we dominate the market of uh, shares of over 55% um, within the Chinese uh, um, consumers. On top of that, you know, we, our traffic generates right now uh, over 770 million unique visitors a month. So the, and that, that's, that's huge. That's crazy. That, that's, it, it, that's, it's, more than, that's more than twice the U.S. population. <laughs> right. So just carving out a small niche uh, within that, it'll be very, very profitable. Uh, on top of that, we're always at the forefront of the latest and, um, you know, trendiest things to do. One thing uh, that uh, Timo, I believe, is doing really, really well compared to, let's say, Amazon is um, our live streaming that we offer. Um, live streaming is extremely popular in China and is something... Um, you know, rapid growth. And that's something that we work very closely with uh, KOLs or key opinion leaders within China. Mm -hmm. And we help brands up with them, you know, relative to this specific category. Some, some of them were even trying to sign exclusive deals and such where they only represent our platform. So it's a great opportunity for brands to come uh, uh, onto us, not only to access the Chinese consumer, but also to see what they can gain and learn um, and to sort of reflect it back to the USA. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned before you guys purchased, uh, Alibaba purchased uh, Kala, which is, if people aren't familiar with that, I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll pop up a little slide with, with its logo, but it's a, it's a logo of a little koala bear. And uh, they grew up pretty quickly and became a very strong kind of cross-border platform, uh, international, not, you know, tmall.com. Let's, let's clarify that too. tmall.com is for domestic, is the domestic tmall platform, whereas a lot of the the, what we talked about earlier is is tmall.hk right yeah correct. which is the global part of of tmall correct so any foreign brands um um sell through uh, to the chinese consumer through that platform okay and then for tmall.com if you were going to sell your products on that site then you would need to be kind of a, a legal legally uh in china market uh, you need to import it. Yeah, correct. Or you import it directly through the traditional uh, trading, which, okay, you yeah. know, supplement, you need the blue hat. <laughs> yeah, sure. You need, you need the registration. Well, luckily there, there is some, there is some movement on, on the regulations as of late, things are changing a little bit. So there's some new categories that, that you can do the recording process and get in the country a little faster. So I think team all and all the platforms are going to see a little bit more uptick of some of the product like fish oil and things like this that can actually go through a recording process which is faster and not as yeah. expensive so that's a that's good news um so that's i think that's a good overview of of team all and kind of what we wanted to cover today of course there's a lot i'm sure companies have a lot of questions uh details and we can cover those one by one if people contact us. But you, I understand we were talking earlier, you guys have an event coming up. Uh, correct, we have a virtual summit that's gonna be held um, uh, around January, January 18th. Um, and it's gonna be an all-inclusive uh, event where all the category and the category heads are gonna be there. Um, when you join the event, you're gonna be directed to the categories that you're interested in. And um, you will see the presentation um, on more specific details and such about, you know, the category overview and how to work with us within that category. Okay, so the 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 link isn't ready yet, but we'll um, we'll post it maybe on LinkedIn or something, so people that follow follow me in the association or, or follow you on on LinkedIn, we could see the ad and and get the link there. Yep, definitely. To, to to join in, and, and there there could be some more more questions answered during those during that event. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, sounds good. Um, and um, 
I'm glad to hear the tax now is kind of unified and has gone down a little bit. That's nice to hear. Before it was like 15% or 11% something, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's good news. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Eric, so much for your time. And um, anyone that has any questions, I'll direct them to you if that's okay. Um, and and uh, um, all the best to you. Happy holidays. Christmas is coming up quick here. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you haven't probably been back to China for quite a while now because of this pandemic, huh? No, oh, yeah. I have not went at all this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, we, we, have, we had a live event in November. Uh, in China and Shanghai. So it's, it's unfortunate. Well, it's, it's good. I shouldn't say unfortunate, but China is kind of back to work and people are getting around doing things, having conferences and seminars and all these things. And we're still, you know, unfortunately stuck here with, uh, with this uh, pandemic. So hopefully springtime 2021, hopefully things change <laughs> and we can get back to traveling around. Definitely. All right, Eric. Well, thanks again for your time. All right. Take it easy, Jeff. Okay, See take care. Soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to HPA Global Insights. Please like, subscribe, and share with your colleagues. Any questions or suggestions, email us at info at uschinahpa.org. This channel is operated by U.S. China Health Products Association, which is a nonprofit organization. Please consider joining the association and supporting its global endeavors. Your support is very much appreciated. Until next time, take care.